Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael. I'm going to be your host for this afternoon's session where we're looking at the invoices and credits module. So we're going to concentrate on sales invoices today. Uh, so it's going to be myself presenting today. I'll be doing the talking and the demos, and I'm joined by Jackie, my colleague, who will be sitting there in the background trying to answer any questions that you have. Now, just for those of you that may not have attended a webinar before, a little bit of housekeeping before we do get started. So you don't need a microphone for these sessions, first of all. If you have one, you're just going to be muted automatically. You'll find you can't unmute yourself. Now, that doesn't mean you can't answer or ask any questions, but you will need to type them in via the questions panel. If you can't currently see the questions panel in the bottom right-hand corner of your uh, screen, then just on your toolbar, you'll have a little icon, looks like a speech bubble containing a question mark. Give it a click. You'll get the little box, which you can show or hide throughout the session. Uh, then you can be able to start typing, typing your questions in. And we'll just try and pick them up as and when you submit them. Obviously, we are going to prioritise the questions relating to what we're talking about today, because we get we get loads of just spurious questions uh, during these sessions. So we will prioritise the ones relating to the actual webinar topic itself. If you want to download a copy of the slides, there's a little icon, the handouts icon, so you can download a copy of those as well. Some people like to have that. However, all of the information that we do cover today, it is available from within our help centre. Right, okay. Let's have a look at what we're going to be covering. So we're going to start by just having a quick look at the invoice process. So what steps are involved in the invoice process in CH50 accounts? We'll then look at how that invoice process integrates with your customer and your product records. So at what point does the invoice appear on the activity or at what point if it is a stock uh, invoice, at what point is that stock adjusted? So we'll cover that as well, just so you've got that understanding. And by understanding that as well, it can preempt maybe some of those questions that you're likely to have. So, you know, if you need to delete an invoice, if you've made a mistake, can you still amend it? That type of thing. We're going to look at the defaults as well. So where do certain transactions either pick up their nominal code from or uh, their uh, VAT rate? So we'll pick those up as well. We're going to look at uh, options. So just running through the invoicing module. And then obviously we'll just have a look at some of the other options that you've got available that are just included in the, the standard invoice process that we're looking at. So, so as you'll be aware, if you go into invoices and credits, you've got a big big row of icons on your toolbar at the top. So we'll just cover some of those, those key ones just to, again, give you an idea what some of them do. Uh, we'll also, as usual, like to plug some of our webinars as well. Uh, Shalna, you mentioned there, are, are we covering quotations? It's not really, we're not really covering quotations today. It's more the process of entering invoices. So looking at the product invoice and a service invoice. But to be honest, if you can enter an invoice, you'd be more than capable of doing a quotation. The only difference is with a quotation is you just need to flag it as being one and that will then generate the invoice for you. And again, you'll find loads of information such as advice on that. Uh, you'll find that available within the help center. As usual, you will receive a follow-up email when you leave the session today. So watch out for that. You normally get that around about an hour to two hours after we finish the session. It will include the links on that you need to register for other webinars. And there should be a recording of today's session available by the time you get that. Now, just before we do start, I'm gonna run a quick poll. Always quite interesting. We've run this session twice so far uh, with very contrasting results as well. So I'm just going to launch that. So if you don't mind, just give me a yes or no. So do you currently use the invoicing within your software? Just give me a yes, literally a yes or no. So I'll just give that a, a minute, maybe it's 30 seconds, just to see what how people vote on that one. We'll see what sort of results we get. The first time we ran this session, it was sort of 60% said, no, they don't. And then it was 60, 40 the other way on. Uh, last time we ran it, so 60% saying, uh, yes, we did do run uh, invoicing currently. But it just gives us an idea and helps us to shape, maybe shape the webinar a little bit. 
Okay, excellent. So just under 80% of you have voted there. So we we'll close that. It just gives me a good idea of who's coming along to the webinar and what position you're actually in. So currently I've got 64% uh, saying yes, you currently use invoicing. Uh, and 36% saying uh, no, you don't. So I'm assuming the 36% you're going to be looking to maybe utilize the invoicing function, see how easy it is to use. And maybe the 64% of you that are currently using it, hopefully you'll just pick up some tips along the way as well. Make sure what you're doing is right. Make sure you've got that good understanding. Right, so okay, let's pop back to the slides. Now the first area that we are going to look at with you is the invoice process itself. So three key steps in the invoice process. Entering your invoice. So we'll have a look at that and we'll have a look at both product invoicing and service invoicing, show you the two options. Uh, we'll look at printing and emailing it and also update, updating the ledgers. Now printing and emailing and update ledgers, it doesn't matter what order you do those in. So well, the logical, from, from in my head anyway, the logical thing would be to enter the invoice, print it or email it there and then, and then update it to the ledgers. But those second two steps, they completely interchangeable with regard to the order that you do with them. Anyway, let's uh, share my screen, find the right button. And we'll get stuck into some demos. Okay, so we're gonna start by going into invoices and credits. Uh, we're just gonna click new invoice. I'm just gonna quickly run you through, particularly for those of you that have never entered an invoice within the software before, give you an idea of some of the options that you've, you've got available to you. So first of all, you've got the type at the top, invoice. You've also got a pro forma option. Now that pro forma option will only be available to you if you are on the professional level of the software. But we just wanna concentrate on the basics of entering an invoice today. The second option is the format. You get two choices of this one, product or service. Now with a standard sort of installation, brand new company, it is gonna to default to product, but I'll show you where you can set the default for that one in a moment. So I'll quickly enter a product invoice, just try and run you through and give you an idea of some of the options that you've got available. And then we'll have a look at the service and see how that, how that differs. So obviously you are prompted with the uh, the date. It does pick up your program date. If anyone finds that that date is behind where it should be, it is going to be picking up your PC date. Now, if your PC date is up to date, it probably just means that you just haven't been closing Sage 50 accounts down. So it picks up your the program date will pick it up when you actually launch Sage 50. Easy enough to change via the settings menu if you needed to, or you can just close and reopen and pick up your date again. Next thing is to specify your account reference. Now I've got to keep it nice and simple in this session today. I've only got the one. So I'm almost starting with almost like a blank set of data so you can see and follow this through nice and easily. The invoice number will be set to auto number. Now the number won't be allocated to the invoice until the point you save it. Bit of a historic reason for that one as well. And Shelna, you're asking there, can you backdate an invoice? Absolutely, yeah. So if you don't do invoicing every day, you can set that date to whatever you want. You might even prepare your invoices in advance if you needed to, you can do that. That's not a problem at all. Uh, order number, that's your internal order number. Now, if you are using sales orders as, as you, the invoice, uh, so as you sort of uh, dispatch the sales order and generate invoices on the back of it, it will pull that order number through automatically. If you're not generating via the sales order option, then it is literally just a box that you can click into and put your own reference in there. You've got a due date, will be, which will be calculated automatically based on the payment terms within your customer's record. Again, you can amend that, you can override it if needed. And then you've got your customer order number. So if you have been provided with one, you can include that at that point. We then come down to the main body of the invoice. Now, if you've set up product records, which I've just set some very basic ones up today. So I'm gonna choose this stock item. Now, if you're not familiar with products and services, we do have a webinar scheduled in for this. So if you wanna have a look at the, the differences between these options when you're setting them up, then do get yourself signed up for that one as well. So I'm just gonna choose this one here that I've got, it's a stock item, this one. 
I'll just leave the quantity set to one. And obviously it's picked up the price uh, from the stock record itself. Now you can drill down onto the item. So you've got this little attached to the description, you've got this little edit icon. So if you click that, it takes you into the edit item line. You can also, you've got the option here at the top, view, view item, or you can just, as it mentions at the top there, you can press F3 on your keyboard. And when you are anywhere on this line, if you press F3, it will bring up the edit item line window. So in here, you've got your, obviously it's gonna pull through your description. It's gonna pull through the, the units that you sell this particular item in. Obviously it's pulled through from the record, but you can also add comment one and comment two. So you, if you need to maybe uh, add something in like a, a batch number, uh, a serial number for an item like you're selling, or just additional information. There might be certain special instructions or conditions surrounding the seal of that item that you want to provide, warranty information, guarantee information, anything like that, you could pop that in. You then come down to your values, which obviously it's got the majority of this information is already on the, the main invoice screen itself. So you can amend them in here. And that includes entering either a discount percentage or a discount amount. And you've got your net and obviously your VAT here as well. Now your posting details, so this information here, it is going to pull through that by default from the actual product record itself. So within this product record that I've specified, this STK001 item that I've got set up, I've got these this information set as the defaults. Now you've got other information in here as well, including the Cognet option, you've got discounts options available. If you want to see what discounts, if any, have been applied, you can have a look at that one. Uh, and you've also got price lists, but I, I don't want to go into these at all today because they're it's going to make it a lot more complex and probably don't have enough time to get through it anyway. So we just want to cover the very basics of invoicing uh, today. So we're going to click OK to that one. And obviously you would have that available for every item that you, you do enter. Now, when you're entering a, a, a product invoice, a couple of extra options that I want to quickly mention to you. If you've got one-off items, now you do have some special, uh, you have what's termed the special product codes. So if you've got one-off items where you don't want to set up a, a record for it, what you can do is just type S, S1. Now, when I type S1 and press the tab key on my keyboard, it'll bring up the edit item line. Now, S1 is what you would term a special product code. So it's used where you've got a one-off and the tax code will default to T1. So it means that you, you know, if you've got a one-off item that you just want to type in a description there and then you want to type in a quantity, a unit price, you don't want to set that up as a record. You can key it in there and then. So that's S1. You've also got S2. S2, exactly the same apart from the tax code, will default to T0 for your zero rated items. But again, it's for one off where you don't want to set up a record. You've also got S3. Now S3 is only available to you if you're on the professional level of the software. Uh, S3 is for a one-off service item. So you can do a bit of mixing and matching on your, your invoicing then. So you can pull through your product records, but also put very detailed sort of one-off services on there as well. So again, keying in the information as you go. And the final one to mention is the M, which is for an item line message. So when I press type in M and press the tab key, it brings up the item line message. So there's no quantity, no unit price, no tax code or anything attached to this one. It's just a way of adding in additional text. So for instance, if you were invoicing and maybe you, uh, maybe you invoice once a month, you invoice at the end of the month, but you maybe you deliver goods or provide services over that month. So you could type in M and do like a delivery and put the date in and then list the items or the services provided. And you could continue doing that down your invoice just to give it a little bit of structure. So let's just get rid of that one. I'm just gonna remove that line. So that's the basics of entering and building up your invoice. So nice and simple. You've noticed you've got a number of tabs down the side here as well. So details is what we're looking at at the moment. If we go into order, you 
can see you've got your delivery information in there. Obviously, if you've got multiple delivery addresses set up, you can change that at that point. You've got your notes box. So if you just want to provide additional information on the invoice, or maybe not even provide it on the invoice, but just record information against that invoice, you've got that option. You've got certain customer information that's pulled through automatically and also who was logged in when you entered it. So I'm logged in as manager at the moment. And then you've got your analysis fields. Analysis fields can be used really for whatever you want. It's just for recording additional information. So are there common questions that you ask? Standard questions that you ask when your customer places the order. Where did you hear about us? Or, you know, that type of thing. Maybe you always want to record that against analysis one. So you can change the titles of these as well within uh, settings and configuration if you needed to. So if you've got a specific use for them, and you might not, but if you do, you can change the titles just so you've got that consistency. People know what to key in what box. Next, you've got the footer. So this is where you'd enter the details of any carriage charges. You could do settlement terms as well, or what you may refer to as early payment discount. You've got global options. Now, what global options is used for is, let's say you've got a 10 line invoice. When you update that one to the ledgers, so essentially push the information onto the activity of the customer, do you want it to post as a single item or do you want to show the actual breakdown of the invoice? I don't think it's commonly used these days, this one. It's global, but it is an option should you want it. And then you've just got your tax analysis as well. Finally, you've got your payment details. So this is where you can record details of any money received. You've got this option here, pay deposit by card as well. So there are additional options available that are additional services, I should mention, uh, rather say, uh, such as uh, linking to a PO, which used to be to, uh, called CHP. Uh, so if you were to link to an appeal account, it means potentially you could take a card payment at this point. You can also record the type of payment. So is it a payment you've already received that you've entered here, in which case it won't post an additional transaction. Uh, or if it is a brand new transaction, do you want to post that as a payment on account? Or do you want to allocate it to the invoice when you update it to the accounts? So you've got a number of options there. Now, all I'm going to do at this stage is just save that. And then what I'm next going to quickly do is quickly have a look at service. Now, for a, a product invoice, we can see we've got a product code, a description, quantity, unit price. And if I switch to a service item, now what we've now got is just a details column. So it's not pulling through record information from a, a record that we've got set up. It's just so you can key in the detail there and then. You've got the amount, and then you've got the net and the VAT. Similarly, though, if I just choose a customer, and I'll just type uh, services. If I drill down on it, so using, again, this little icon to view the item line, so it looks similar to when, you know, when we typed a, a S3 on the, the record earlier on the product. So you've got virtually identical boxes. So here you can continue entering your description. You've got the quantity if you needed to amend that, the unit price, you can add discount in at this stage as well. Uh, so again, standard information there. But again, what I'll do at that point, the rest of it is exactly the same. So the order tab, the footer and the payment is exactly the same as what we've just looked at. So we'll just save that. Now, if you're forever at this stage, coming in and say, oh, I need to do a service. And yes, forever switching that, you can set that. So all you would need to do is go into settings. I'll come back to this a little bit later on as well to discuss some of those other settings. So settings, invoice and order default. So if you're on the essentials level or a lower level, you may just find when you go into settings, you've just got invoice settings or invoice defaults rather than invoice and order defaults. So invoice defaults, and it's this option here, default invoice. So you can actually set it to your preferred option. So if I choose service invoice as an example, just OK that. Uh, when I click new invoice, it will pick up that as a default then. Again, it might just save you those extra couple of clicks each and every time. 
it can all add up to obviously the time that it takes to, to do these processes then. Let me just set that one back. So I'll set it back to a product invoice. Now that's step one, entering your invoice. Your next step is, well, I mentioned there were two extra steps. There's the print or email, and you've also got the update ledgers option. Now let's just get discuss print and email first. You've also got quick print as well. I'll explain what that does in a moment. Now, if you go via print, and initially it's not going to list anything. So when you first come into here, it'll say no favorites have been added. Uh, you'll need to click into the layouts folder, and then you're going to be provided with a gulf of, of layouts here. There's loads available. Uh, some historic ones where you've used older VAT rates, some which are designed for 11 inch or letter size stationery if you're printing them out, some which are designed for A4 stationery, some which are designed for printing on plain paper so they don't have any background or anything like that on them. Uh, and if you scroll down the bottom, you've got some which are fully designed for email as well. And of course, you can design your own on top. If you're interested in finding out how to even just tweak your layouts, get yourself signed up for one of our report designer webinars. We cover the very basics, things like adding your logo, that type of thing. Right, so what I'm gonna do for this one, I'm just gonna choose, I'll, I'll highlight that. So if I wanna use that one all the time, rather than me coming into layouts and scrolling down the list and finding it, just tick on the little star to flag it as a favorite and it will pop it in here for you. Now, obviously what we can do, we can print it, we can email it and tie it up to you. If you find you're struggling with email, there's loads of information available for that within our, our help center. But if I just highlight it, I'll just preview it so you can give you an idea what it might look like. And all of these have, all of these layouts have different settings as well. So if you wanna pop in your logo, you wanna change the boxes, you wanna change text, you wanna put your bank details at the bottom, you, you, it's a really powerful report designer you have. So again, maybe come along to our report design webinar just to get, maybe get your, your brain thinking a little bit as to what you could, maybe some changes that you, you could make just to spruce it up a little bit. So find a, find a one that's that you like, but you can obviously, you can amend them if required. So printing straightforward, emailing should be straightforward as well. Tells me it's been output to email and that will be it done. Now you can also in here, you've got the quick print and the email. And I'm gonna cover those a little bit later on in the session with you just to, but I'll come back to that one a little bit later on. So easy enough to print or email them. Update ledgers. So this option here. So at this stage, and I might as well cover the next section at this at this point as well. So at this stage, this this uh, invoice that we've entered, which is against this A1 Design Services account, and it's also for that stock item. So at this stage, if I go into the customer account, you'll see it's got a zero balance. And if we go into it, have a look at the activity, you'll see there's nothing on there yet. So the invoice at this stage, because I haven't updated it to the ledger, so essentially I haven't committed it to my accounts yet, it doesn't appear against that customer. Similarly, if I go into my product records and have a look at the stock item that we just added to that invoice, we have a look at the activity, uh, there's nothing on there for what I've just literally, that invoice that I've just entered. This, in case you're wondering, this one is from a, a previous demo. Presumably that was on the fifth when I've done that one. So there's nothing on there yet. And it's not until I update the invoice, so we go back to it, so this invoice here, we choose the update ledgers. I'll just preview the report so you can see what that looks like. If there was any problem with previewing the report, for instance, it might say well, you, you don't have sufficient stock to be able to do, do, do this, or maybe there's some information missing. Uh, then it would tell you. But this one's gone through. It's telling me invoice uh, number 35. It's posted as an SI. It's transaction number one, and it's got the rest of the details on there. Obviously, if I posted more than one item on that invoice, it would list them. 
but that would now say posted. And when it says posted, it means it's been updated to the customer's account. So you can see we've got the balance on there now. Similarly, if we go into products and services, back into the activity of this item, you can see we've got the additional transaction on here, that goods out transaction. So that's the basics of invoicing. And just going quickly going back to the slides. So those, those three key steps, entering the invoice, printing it, emailing it, and then updating it to the ledger. So that update ledgers is the bit that commits it to your accounts. And that's what I was going to cover originally in this next section. So how does that process, at what point does that process impact on the customer's record and the product's record? So it's when you update it to the ledgers. So hopefully, just a case of you going into, in, if, you know, if you've made a mistake or you think, well, well, I need to update that, it will help you to determine and troubleshoot what you need to do. If it's updated to the ledger, so it shows it's being posted, then you're a bit more restricted as to what you can do. If you made any amends to it, that would not be reflected in the customer's account. If you need any advice on what to do at that point as well, then you know where we are. Get in touch with our support team or check out the information in, in our help centre. Next, I want to quick, take a quick look at defaults. And again, we'll, we'll go back into the invoice and order defaults or invoice defaults if you're on uh, maybe the essentials level of the software. And just pick up a couple of key points for you. Now, this it, it, loads of information as usual within the help center. If you've downloaded the handout as well, these links at the bottom uh, will link off to the relevant help articles as well. Right, let's get back to my screen and we'll have a look at the, the defaults area. So, popping into settings, invoice and order defaults, or just invoice defaults, depending on the level of the software that you're on. So a couple of key points to mention. We've already mentioned the default format for your invoices. Obviously, you can set that for the others as well. So if you're doing credits, you might want it to default to a service credit. Uh, going into options, you can set your numbering. So if you're coming from other software, or maybe those of you that said you aren't using the invoicing module so far, if you're about to start invoicing, and you want to maintain your numbering sequence, you can come in and specify what you want your next invoice number to be. So that's where you'll find it. The other I want to quickly mention as well is update ledgers. Now, this is a fairly new enhancement, this one to the software. I say that, it's probably been around for a few years now. Uh, and it's when you update your invoice to the ledgers, what information do you want to transfer across to the individual transactions? So you'll know yourself when you're entering transactions, you're presented with a reference and an extra reference. So you've got those two fields and you can choose what information from the invoice is posted to those fields when you update your invoice to the ledgers. Now, I would always say update the reference field with the invoice number. You can amend it if you want to, but I would always re normally recommend that you always use the invoice number. The extra reference you can choose. Do you want it to, again, use the invoice number? Probably not, because you've already used that one for the reference, but you can swap them the other way around if, you, if, if that's more suitable for you. You can use your order number, which is the internal order number, or you can use the customer order number, or you can just say, well, I just, I just want to leave it blank. I think by default, it's invoice number and your order number. So do be aware of that one as well. So there's, there is loads of settings. You've got the help option at the bottom here as well, if you need any advice on any of these settings. Uh, so do check that out if you get a chance. Loads of questions coming through for Jackie, so I'll join in with the questions in around about five minutes or so. Uh, so I'll keep keep her busy in the meantime. Keep your questions coming. Right, okay, let's quickly pop back to the slides. 
Uh, what I'm next going to do is just pick up on some of the options, some of the other options that you've got on your toolbar within invoices and credits, just to give you an idea of what some of them actually do. You'll be aware that there's a great big toolbar at the top. Now, not everyone will have all of these options. Again, if you're on the essentials option, uh, on the essentials level of the software, you won't necessarily have all of these options, but we'll quickly run through them just so you can see what they are. A couple of key ones that I do want to pick out is duplicate, or duplicate, depending on which way you pronounce that one. Uh, credit invoice, that could be a good good little time saver, that one. And also going back to printing and emailing, we'll pick up on that as well. Right, back to my screen. So we're already in the invoicing module. So we'll quickly duplicate. Uh, actually, I'm not in that module, am I? I'll go back to invoices and credits. So some of them will be grayed out. You know, you'll, you're going to need to select something for some of them to become active. So we'll duplicate to begin with. So does your customer come back and say, right, I want to place a repeat order? Or if you're service based, do you key in loads of text and then have to do the same thing time and time again for different customers? So could you highlight your existing invoice and then say, well, I want to duplicate it. And when you duplicate it, it will bring up an exact copy of the original invoice. Other than it'll obviously pick up your, your uh, current date. Now at that point, you could change it to a different customer. You could add items, you can amend it. But you might have an invoice with 40 items on. Customer wants a repeat, uh, repeat order, except for five of the items. So you, much easier to duplicate it and then remove those items, maybe adjust quantities, unit prices, whatever you need to change at that point, than it would be to probably key that in from scratch. That's a duplicate option. Recurring items, if you maybe it's probably more likely if you're service-based, maintenance contracts, that type of thing. If you want to invoice your customers on a regular basis for the same thing. You could potentially set that up as a recurring, so membership, subscriptions, professional fees, that type of thing, or just maintenance. Update ledgers we've already covered. Credit invoice, again, could potentially can be a little time saver, that one. It's just a case of highlighting which one you want to generate the credit on the back of. Credit the invoice, and it just saves you keying it in. Now, when you do that, you haven't saved it yet, you'll still be able to make whatever amends that you need to. So if you've got, again, you've got 20 items on there, sometimes it's easier to remove items that you don't want to credit than it is to generate a credit from scratch. Now, when if you do use that generate credits, what you will get when you save it is this option here. Do you want to update this credit note and allocate it to the invoice? So this is almost going to skip some of the steps. So if I click yes, what that does, it tells me that it's, first of all, it's created the credit note, which is allocated number 37. It's been updated to the ledgers and it has been allocated to the actual invoice that's already been posted to my account. So that can be a good little time saver, that one. It hasn't printed it out yet, but it means it's it's updated it, it's on the customer's account, and where possible, it's allocated that to the against the invoice itself. Right, quick uh, question from uh, Karen there. I'll quickly pick some of those. I think Jackie's picking those up for you as well. So uh, you, don't, you mentioned you don't have the recurring items. Uh, if you're on the essentials level, some options you won't have available to you. So you don't get the duplicate option and I don't think you get recurring items either. But I think you get, I'm sure you get all of the others that are listed there. Now, quick print and email. Now these options are designed for a one touch option or a one click option. So rather than me highlight my invoice on the list and then go to print, find my layout, which might mean going into layouts, finding it on the list, selecting it, and then saying, right, I want to output that to email. And just clicking OK to that one. Off it goes. What I can do is when you first either click email or quick print, it will prompt you. It will say, right, which layout do you want to use? Now, once you've set that, and you click the likes of email, 
that's it done. So it's a one click option at that point. Similar for quick prints as well, if you still like to print out your invoices. So rather than you sort of go via the print option and browse for your layout, select it, output to printer, okay the print defaults and then it prints. If you've got a default layout set, just be a case of clicking the option and it will accept all of the defaults at that point. So it can be a good little time saver that one. Labels, if you want to do things like address labels, you can do that one via this option. Reports you've got available as well. And obviously you can print the list or if you want to send the list across to Excel, if you've got the desktop version uh, installed of Excel, then it'll just, whatever is on this list here, it'll transfer that across for you. With the send to Excel as well, and also reporting, do, do be aware that you can display additional columns on your list here as well. So if you just right click any of your column headings, you might want to display analysis one, for instance, analysis two, analysis two or analysis three. You might want those on the list. And then maybe that you then send it to Excel and it would include all the information that's listed. Be aware of that one because we get a lot of queries from people saying, right, I, I, I want that list, but I want to include this information. Quite often, it's as simple as just switching on a column. Maybe you want to display the customer's order number. So you've got that column here. You could even sort by that column as well, or sort by sort by your customer, put them in alphabetical order. Might just help you, again, just help you get at the information that little bit quicker for what you're after. So those are the options, loads of information available, as I mentioned, available within the help center. So do, again, do check that out. Now that brings us to the short overview of invoicing. As you can see, there's a, a lot more to it than that. And I'm going to just help Jackie out with some of the questions in a moment as well. Uh, in just a moment, but I just want to quickly bring your attention to some of the upcoming webinars that we've got available. Uh, so tomorrow, a brand new item, a brand new webinar, as we always run it on Wednesdays at 2 p.m recurring items that will include invoices for those of you that have that option. Uh, so uh, Karen, sorry about that one, but if you want to see what recurring items is all about, you know, it might be something that you think, well, I'll upgrade to a higher level purely for that one. Then again, you're more than welcome. We will be covering recurring items that are available within the bank as well though. So everyone does have option access to that option at all levels. So your regular payments, you can set up journals in there as well. So things like your direct debits and your standing orders. Well, when you manually key them in, you could set them up as a recurring item. If anyone wants a sneak peek at what's coming in version 28.1, so our next update, I think that probably should be available uh, early next month, then get yourself signed up. We've got one of those sessions on Thursday at two. Very busy, those sessions, but come along. Really good feedback on the features that are there, whether you want to see the data management tool, options so you can have the software open multiple times on the same PC, you name it. There's loads of extra features gone in. So why not come along, reserve your space, and then come along and see, what's, see what you're about to get with the, the latest update. Loads of other topics as well. If you're interested in coming along to any of these, just watch out for your follow-up email. You'll get that, as I say, about maybe one to two hours after the session today. It's going to have links so you can register for future webinars. And also, if you want to watch recordings, you'll have that link as well. If you've got any ideas for topics you'd like to see covered, there'll be a short survey pop-up as you leave the session. If you can, pop it onto there. Uh, we always, myself and Jackie, always have a look at those just to see what people are requesting. You never know, it might be something that we've run in the past that we can just point you in the right direction of. But load, loads of recordings already available as well. So questions, keep them coming. We're gonna hang around probably for about another, till about, probably till about quarter to three. Uh, so about another seven minutes or so. Uh, we'll, we'll keep picking up questions. Uh, people ask, just uh, Shelna, you mentioned about the, the slides there, slides, the copy of the slides, if anyone needs them as well, they can be downloaded via the handouts option. So if you want a copy of those, 
But again, all the information that we've discussed today and more is available from within our help centre. Now, I'll start picking up questions with Jackie in just a moment. But for those of you that are about to leave, many thanks for coming along today. I hope you have enjoyed this. You found it useful. Even if it's just maybe give you a little bit of reassurance of the options that you what you're doing is, is right. That's, that's absolutely great. For those of you that weren't using invoicing, are you going to maybe are you going to use it going forward? Is it right for you? If it is, again, there'll be a question about that on the on the uh, on the little survey that pops up as you leave today. So, will you use your software a little bit more effectively? But if you're about to leave, thanks for coming along. Take care, stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you on some of the other webinars. Uh, but we're going to hang around and answer as many questions as we can just for about the next five minutes or so. So keep them coming. Uh, Shelna, if you just want to reply to any of your webinar emails, you just mentioned the slides aren't downloading. That can just be a restriction if you're using, uh, I think it's Microsoft Edge. It tends to prevent you from downloading them. The session will be recorded as well, but Shelna, if you want to email me, so just reply to any of your webinar emails and just ask for a copy of the slides for today. And that when you click reply, it'll automatically come to myself. Uh, so we get a copy sent out for you. Just going to quickly go back to uh, a question that we got at the very beginning of the session, just having a quick look at quotations. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly share my screen again. Uh, we're going to, on the toolbar here, go into quotations. But again, I think if you can enter an invoice, you're going to be more than capable, because as you'll see, uh, it'll default to that. Now, again, this can vary, this option at the top here. Uh, yours might say quote invoice and it depends on the level of the software you have and if you are on the professional level you can set the quotes to either convert to an invoice or a sales order when you flag it as being one so you do get that option again you'll find that option within settings and then your invoice and order defaults but it's pretty much uh, pretty much the same uh, same options that you're going to have available to you so as you see, this the screen's pretty much the same. Wait, anything else? I think we are we up to date? I think we're up to date. Right. I think in that case, if there aren't any outstanding questions at this point, so Jackie's been typing away furiously there, if there aren't any outstanding questions, uh, I think we'll just end the webinar at that point, give you a few minutes back, a little bit early. So once again, many thanks for your time. Thanks for coming along. If you can take a minute to complete the exit survey, that should pop up as you leave the session today. It'd be greatly appreciated. Share your thoughts with us. Have we hit the mark? Is it what you expected? Is it not? Have you got any ideas for what you'd like to see covered going forward? So if you can take a minute to do that, be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, take care, stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you on some future webinars soon. Many thanks.